Good evening everyone, time for another silver update. Now I showed you this chart before, this is the weekly chart of the Euro and the Chinese Yuan cross. And you can see we're still dropping in these red candlesticks. Drawn a few lines here, the major downtrend line, and then a couple of these trend lines that may be violated here. The top one has been violated, the bottom one it depends if you draw the points of the candlestick. Very important is you can see the parallel to the breakdown that we had at the beginning of the financial crisis. Here it is and there was the breakdown of the MACD through the zero line. We have the same thing here. So it appears to be a continuation of the same trend and we're going to be looking at this, the Europe and the United States leadership, the new world order, and what all of this stuff means going forward. Before we do that, let's look at the silver price. And I want to point out a couple of things here. We've had some fits and starts type of rally sort of thing. We had another one today. Let's pull it into the one minute. Probably gives us the best view. So we had some fits and starts. You can see here we started off a little rally. We went all the way up to about 1963. You can see we did that on the previous day. Not nearly as strong today. And of course then they take it all the way back down. What does this mean? Not necessarily a lot. Uh, it's, it's unique in the sense that I haven't seen this in a while but it, it may just be that certain people are taking positions and then the cartel is coming in. The volume doesn't really give us that much more information. So it's just more evidence in my mind that there seems to be a battle right around 20 or keeping it below the 20 price. So let's get over to this Henry Kissinger article. This is a really important article because it's about the New World Order and I think that their New World Order is actually in a little bit of danger here. So this was today on the Wall Street Journal. Henry Kissinger on the Assembly of a New World Order the concept that has underpinned I can't read the word there the modern geopolitical crisis modern geopolitical era is in crisis so let's read this and I'm gonna comment on a lot of this because it's such a bunch of hoo-ha this guy Henry Kissinger I mean how many people would nominate him for the most evil person on the planet I don't know but it's gonna be a lot so here we go. Libya is in civil war. Well, why is that? Did Gaddafi step down or was he overthrown? And who backed the rebels? Hmm. Fundamentalist armies are building a self-declared caliphate across Syria and Iraq, and Afghanistan's young democracy is on the verge of paralysis. Well, I think the U.S. was involved in Syria and Iraq, and that's right, they invaded Afghanistan. To these troubles are added a resurgence of tensions with Russia. Oh, that would be the Ukraine. We're going to revisit that. I think that was a democratic government that was overthrown by a U.S.-backed coup. And a relationship with China divided between pledges of cooperation and public recrimination. The concept of order that has underpinned the modern era is in crisis. The search for world order has long been defined almost exclusively by the concepts of Western societies. In the decades following World War II, the U.S., strengthened in its economy and national confidence, began to take up the torch of international leadership and added a new dimension. A nation founded explicitly on an idea of free and representative governance the U.S. identified its own rise with the spread of liberty and democracy and credited these forces with an ability to achieve just and lasting peace. The traditional European approach 
to order had viewed peoples and states as inherently competitive to constrain the effects of their clashing ambitions. It relied on a balance of power and a concert of enlightened statesmen. The prevalent American view considered people inherently reasonable and inclined toward peaceful compromise and common sense. The spread of democracy was therefore the overarching goal for international order. Free markets would uplift individuals, enrich societies, and substitute economic interdependence for traditional international rivalries. So that's a lot there, but the spread of democracy, is the spread of democracy the same thing as the spread of free markets? What if a democratically elected government, and of course you know my opinion about free markets, I'm the most pro-free market person in the world, but what if a democratically elected government decides that they don't like free markets? What if somebody, say, like Allende in Chile is elected by a majority of the people? Well, we already know the history. You can look into the history of Central and South America and find that the United States was involved in supporting anti-democratic dictators and was involved in the overthrow of democratically elected we'll call them socialist or leftist leaders. So which is it? Is the United States in favor of democracy or is the United States only in favor of democratic governments that are allied with the United States? And I think you see where I'm going here. This new world order really is pretty much just a US led effort. This effort to establish world order has in many ways come to fruition. A plethora of independent sovereign states govern most of the world's territory. The spread of democracy and participatory governance has become a shared aspiration, if not a universal reality. Global communications and financial networks operate in real time. The years from perhaps 1948 to the turn of the century marked a brief moment in human history when one could speak of an incipient global world order composed of an amalgam of American idealism and traditional European concepts of statehood and balance of power. Now I want to bring you back to the first speech. If, re if you remember the first speech by George Bush Sr., it was during Operation Desert Storm. I believe it was actually after the victory of Operation Desert Storm. And if you remember George Bush Sr. talked about this new world order. And the new world order was an order based upon the cooperation of nations who are going to punish these rogue states. So if you remember, and I don't want to go into the details of what happened with Kuwait and Iraq and a lot of the shady stuff going on there. But basically, the story is that Iraq invaded Kuwait and the world responded. Now the world was led by the United States and Britain, but there was an alliance. They were the allies, if you remember. So fast forward from that to 9-1-1, and if you remember in 9-1-1, the U.S. was quote-unquote attacked, and the U.S. responded with unilateral action in Afghanistan, and then a couple of years later, there was the second Iraq war where George Bush Jr. led an invasion of that. Now, that was a much, much weaker alliance. That was pretty much an obvious U.S. action. Now we want to fast forward to the current administration, the Obama administration, where we have seen basically U.S. unilateral secret actions going on around the world to overthrow existing regimes. Now the question is, are we overthrowing democracies? Are we overthrowing dictators? Or are we just overthrowing people who are not necessarily allied with us? I think the most important one that's in the news right now, and you'll remember I covered it when it came up under my video called Orange Revolution, you'll remember that the Ukraine had a democratically elected government. 
and the leader of that democratically elected government, the president, decided to reject a offer of cozying up to the EU, and it was actually warming up to the Soviet Union. Then we saw this type of staged coup is the only way I can describe it because of all of the fake video and all of the shooting and uh, false flag events. So we had this coup and overthrow of the Ukrainian government, which was warming up to the Soviet or Russia. And now we have this new Ukrainian government and we had a vote by the people of Crimea and they voted universally about 90 something percent to join Russia and become a part of Russia. And of course, we know that that was an attempt to take their only warm water port. But so are we in favor of democracy? Is that what this is really about? Because there was an overthrow of a democratically elected leader who wasn't going to ally with us in Europe. And then there was a democratically elected uh, or a democratic vote to secede and join the Soviet Union. And do we honor that? So I think it's pretty transparent here that it doesn't really have anything to do with democracy, that this is a U.S. led attempt to show the world that everyone's on our side, everyone agrees with us. Uh, that's what's actually breaking down right now. And that is what has Henry Kissinger so concerned. But vast regions of the world have never shared and only acquiesced in the Western concept of order. These reservations are now becoming explicit, for example, in the Ukraine crisis in the South China Sea. What, what about the South China Sea? That China is actually saying that they have some type of Monroe Doctrine in the area where their shipping lanes are? Uh, do we really think that China should allow U.S. fighters and U.S. warships to patrol the South China Sea seriously? The order established and proclaimed by the West stands at a turning point. First, the nature of the state itself, the basic formal unit of international life, has been subjected to a multitude of pressures. Europe has set out to transcend the state and craft a foreign policy based primarily on the principles of soft power. But it is doubtful that claims to legitimacy separated from a concept of strategy can sustain a world order. And Europe has not yet given itself attributes of statehood. Well, actually, no, the states of Europe all had statehood. It wasn't until the EU came along and took away their statehood. So it looks like Kissinger is upset that the EU has not become one monolithic block of states, uh, one state, something like the United States has now become. Tempting a vacuum of authority internally and an imbalance of power along its borders. At the same time, parts of the Middle East have dissolved into sectarian and ethnic components. Really, they've dissolved or have they been infiltrated and overthrown. In conflict with each other, religious militias and the powers backing them violate borders and sovereignty at will producing the phenomenon of failed states not controlling their own territory. Hmm. So I guess he's referring to ISIS. Who's behind ISIS? The challenge in Asia is the opposite of Europe's balance of power principles prevail unrelated to an agreed concept of legitimacy, driving some disagreements to the edge of confrontation. The clash between the international economy and the political institutions that ostensibly govern it also weakens the sense of common pur purpose necessary for world order. What common purpose? Whose common purpose? The U.S.'s common purpose? The IMF, which is a U.S.-created institution? The World Bank, which is a U.S.-created institution? U.S. and Britain? Is, is this a breakdown of world order, or is this a breakdown 
of an Anglo-American dominated world order. The economic system has become global while the political structure of the world remains based on the nation state. Yes, and Henry, that's the way God made it. And the only way it's going to change is if he decides to change it or let it go. Economic globalization in its essence ignores national frontiers. Foreign policy affirms them even as it seeks to reconcile conflicting national aims or ideals of world order. This dynamic has produced decades of sustained economic growth. No, I don't think that that's what's given us economic growth. What's given us economic growth is free markets, not world order. Punctuated by periodic financial crises of seemingly escalating intensity in Latin America in the 80s, Asia 1997, Russia 1998, in the U.S. in 2001, and again starting in 2007, and in Europe after 2010. The winners have few observations about the system. But the losers, such as those stuck in structural misdesigns, so does he believe in free markets or not? As has been the case with European Union Southern Tier, seek their remedies by solutions that negate or at least obstruct the functioning of the global economic system. The international order thus faces a paradox. Its prosperity is dependent on the success of globalization, but the process produces a political reaction that often works counter to its aspirations. Is prosperity really caused by globalization? I do agree that free trade is a good idea as long as it's free and both sides are free, but is the pro was the prosperity of the U.S. based on globalization or was it based on the acceptance of free markets? So I don't have time to go into the rest of the article, but this is an obvious apologetic by Henry Kissinger. It seems that their new world order is starting to fail. And you have to remember that these politicians and these statesmen and these generals and these warmongers and these people, they don't know the future any more than you or I do. They know what they intend to do, they know what they plan to do, but their plans can easily be foiled. So it's my opinion that what we're seeing is the demise of a U.S.-led world order. I believe there's going to be a world order. I believe that during the reign of the Antichrist, that there is going to be a new world order, quote unquote, and that there will be some type of world government. But it seems to me that if we look at all the events that are happening around us today, we're looking at an Anglo-American empire which attempted to create the future to bring in a world order. And again, as I point out many times, this is nothing new. We had Alexander the Great, we had Charlemagne, we had Napoleon, we had Hitler, we had many, many very powerful people and powerful empires who attempted to bring in the New World Order and they utterly failed. Is that what Henry Kissinger is so upset about? And we'll talk to you next time.